What toxic body language and behavioral red flags did Johnny Depp ignore with Amber Heard? Find out next. And we're back. As you all know, Amber Heard is the most perfect relationship partner anyone could ever ask for. Nope. But what toxic body language and behavioral red flags did Johnny Depp excuse, dismiss, or ignore that he should have taken more seriously? We're gonna break down Amber Heard's body language and behavioral red flags so you can know who to stay away from in your life. Now, let's get started. When we talk about these toxic red flags, we can't think of them in isolation only. So one of them is bad, two of them becomes worse, but having all of them together, as seems to be the case with Amber Heard, is a perfect storm for disaster. First, you don't feel safe. Healthy relationships will allow you to feel physically and emotionally safe, for you to feel it's okay to be imperfect and not abused or attacked physically, verbally, and emotionally. We noticed this specifically when Amber Heard admitted on tape to physically striking Johnny Depp. You're a fucking baby. Because you start you physical are fights. You're such a baby. Because Grow you, the fuck up, Because you Johnny. start physical fights. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. Also, if we notice how uncomfortable Johnny Depp's body language is here in this interview when he's next to his abuser. Take a look, see what you think, and then we'll break it down. Did you notice his heavy, anxious breathing, looking down and away, and avoiding eye contact with Amber? As well as when he's looking down and away, he's sucking on his finger to pacify his distress. But did you notice Amber? Yeah, her head is mostly tilted high, faking a downward smile at him. Johnny Depp's behavior and body language there is very typical of someone being around their abuser. That it was going to escalate into violence, and oftentimes it did. Bam! <laughs> looking for a fight, um, actively searching, for a way to instigate a fight. If you're personally starting to notice physical, verbal, and emotional abuse in your relationship, chances are it will escalate. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you excited? Yeah, very. She's a wonderful girl. She's, uh, she's sharp as a tack, you know, wonderful, you know, uh, uh, southern belle and um, sweet as can be. and. Uh, and very good for me. You know. Number two, your relationship starts to feel like a wild roller coaster ride. Relationships, like anything in life, are going to have their ups and downs. However, it becomes a red flag when your downs are disastrous and your ups are just amazing. This can actually be a signal that both partners in the relationship are having difficulty managing and expressing their emotions. What it surely seems like is that Amber had great difficulty in managing her emotions, which makes perfect sense since she was diagnosed with borderline. And we proved in a prior video that Amber seems to have borderline personality disorder and it's very common with borderline to have this type of explosive emotion. She has a need for conflict. She has a need for violence. It erupts out of nowhere. Number three, you're expecting constant gotchas. If a relationship partner feels insecure, constant gotchas will make them feel better about themselves. They're essentially creating and using these no-win situations to make themselves feel better about themselves. Ms. Heard was unable to be wrong. Number four, you don't trust them. Relationships are built on trust, and it's much more than faithfulness. It's believing that your partner will behave in the best interest of the understood expectations of your relationship. Marriage or any monogamous relationship is choosing a partner to take on life together. But when you feel that your partner is recording you to maybe send it to gossip magazines, it's devastating to the relationship's trust. We noticed this when Amber tried to secretly record Johnny slamming kitchen cabinets with her iPad. <coughs> Crazy. Have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this going. You got this going. Oh, really? And then somehow it magically wound up on TMZ when she denied it over and over in trial that she was the one who sent it to TMZ. Absolutely not. No, it did not. You edited that video out did the not portions. come to me. That's her. Come from me. Number five, your partner's communication is hostile. Hostile communication causes tension and distrust in the relationship. The difference between healthy and toxic relationships is not whether you argue or not, but it's how you argue. You're going to have differences of opinion with any partner you choose. That's very normal. It's actually dangerously abnormal to never disagree or argue because there's likely someone who's not being completely open and honest in the relationship. So it's perfectly normal for partners to disagree with open respect 
respectful and calm communication. And if someone gets excited saying something they don't mean, you come back later and apologize. However, since Amber seemed to have quite severe borderline along with possibly some other disorders, her communication was very hostile and arguments became very circular without resolution. The argument would start here and then it would roll around and become this circular thing of its own, a sort of a rapid fire, endless parade of insults. Number six, you do all the work to compromise. You're doing everything to compromise. However, even when you were to do the slightest thing wrong, you get torn apart for it. This arrogance and self-entitlement will erode the relationship because it feels so unfair. We noticed this when Johnny Depp was a little late for Amber Heard's birthday dinner due to an important meeting he had, but she didn't seem to care. We were in the restaurant and she absolutely lost it. Number seven, you make excuses for their behavior. It's good to be a supportive partner, but when you always find yourself covering for your partner, it could be to avoid acknowledging their negative characteristics to others and yourself. Why is he filming? Detective. He Detective. Well, he just Detective. Uh, I'm sorry about this. Just, he's he, he, gets, he gets really starstruck. Right, Notice Amber's face when she flips this guy off. By that I'm guy sorry. Wow. Yeah, those guys were pranking her, giving her a hard time. But notice what she does as soon as they say that they're supposedly big fans. We met Jean-Claude Van Damme one time, and he like we, we had to get a restraining order. Right, she stopped flipping him off and went directly to a cross-body ear tug. What do you think that body language cluster indicates? Watch again. <laughs> We met Jean-Claude Van Damme one time and he like, we, we had to get a restraining order. Yes, self-defense, self-comfort, and that she enjoyed what she just heard. The little bit of a cross body reach is in self-defense, which is probably because she feels embarrassed for flipping off a fan. The ear touch itself is a soothing, self-comforting gesture. Her ears are quite sensitive. And the fact that she's pulling down on her ear to open it up more and not cover it or touch it like this this could be an ear touch and self-comforting, but maybe not wanting to hear what was said. You might do this. It's self-comforting. But closing the ear, but she's pulling down on the ear to open it up, which indicates that she's enjoying what she's hearing. Now notice how all of a sudden now she goes along with taking a photo with them. Oh, have you met Officer Douglas, if you can't, just, if you're gonna do that, just come over. Let's just get one for the newsletter. Let's just get one for the, for the newsletter. What this seems to indicate is that the power of fame has a major impact on her. This could be a subtle indicator of psychopathy. I'll take being called a any day to being called sweet. I don't care what one thinks about me. Amber says all the time that she doesn't care what people think of her. However, people who say that as often as Amber usually care very much what people think of them. What people think is actually on their mind and they're trying to convince themselves and everyone else that they don't really care. Now their hostage video, which they were forced to make after illegally sneaking in their two teacup Yorkies into Australia. Australia is free of many pests and diseases that are commonplace around the world. That is why Australia has to have such strong biosecurity laws. And Australians are just as unique, both warm and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. I am truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. Declare everything when you enter Australia. Notice how Johnny seems tired and exhausted in his tonality along with his body positioning away from Amber, his abuser, and Amber seems as fake as ever reading her script. This would be the last time Johnny Depp and Amber Heard ever willingly appeared on camera together. Just a month later, their marriage was over. Number eight, you are constantly told how wrong you are. If you saw the trial, you heard Johnny say this a lot about Amber. I was sort of not allowed to be right, not allowed to have a voice. This is largely their arrogance and insecurity speaking, where they feel they are in competition with their partner. Very confident, secure people will often say, I don't know, teach me, you're right. I was wrong. Wow, you're better than me with that. When you're looking for someone to be with, look for someone who's not afraid to admit fault. If they can't admit fault when it's clearly their fault, that person may be a problem to be with. Not only because everything is gonna be your fault and never theirs, but also because they're immensely arrogant and insecure. This is a major emotional issue that sometimes never gets resolved in their lifetime. But tell me what a bad father I was. I had no idea how to Parent. Now notice Amber's body language on this late show. Gorgeous here on the cover of uh, this magazine. Thank you. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't help but uh, staring at your tats. Uh, <laughs> 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 once, well, once I love red, your accent. Blue.
We notice Amber's insecure self-image here with Amber eagerly and uncontrollably excited to receive the compliment from Jimmy. Gorgeous here on the cover of uh, the- Yes, immediately when Jimmy says gorgeous, Amber's eyes widen in extreme interest. Her mouth opens in what seems to be her breath being taken away. She's rocking back and forth in her chair with eagerness to hear the compliment. She flicks her tongue out, but seems to be pressing it against the upper level of her teeth, and then also clasps her hands together in all what appears to be self-restraint. Based on her body language here, Amber seems to need validation and seems to imply that she's not very confident in herself. This magazine. Thank you. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't help but uh, staring at your tats. Uh, <laughs> Once, well, once I love red, your accent. Blue. Remember, body language is all about situation, context, and cluster. If they're not evaluating all three, they're not reading body language, they're just being idiots. Number nine, you are frequently being lied to. Amber lies? The jury thought you were lying. Even if you think that I'm lying. I'm lying. With relationships you care about, always think about being overly truthful. And that means more than simply don't lie. Those who build successful relationships understand that trust is the cornerstone of that relationship. So they actively seek opportunities to demonstrate their truthfulness to build their relationships. Look for opportunities to tell the truth in situations where you know it will be verified. For example, I went golfing with my buddies. She may not know 100% that you did unless you fell in the lake, but next time you see your golfing buddies with her, mention a funny story that happened on your golf outing. That builds trust, especially in new and recovering relationships. Remember, lying about the small things are not just annoying to the person, but they also make your partner assume that you're also lying about the big things in your relationship too. Last night was a moment. Notice how Amber seems to have been enjoying getting all the attention from Hollywood men while she was in a relationship. I did have a boyfriend when I filmed on the show and it was incredibly hard. Admitting this. Yeah, I did get hit on quite a bit. Did you catch it? Right, she was remembering back with gleeful preening gestures and a wide excited smile. What are you fucking talking about? What we're noticing constantly with Amber Heard is her desperate need to get attention everywhere as much as possible. We noticed that before she was with Johnny Depp, while she was with Johnny Depp, during trial, after trial, constantly. She has a need for attention. That goes back to one of her other diagnoses, which is histrionic personality disorder. I will never be the same person. Which is very common of that diagnosis, to be in desperate need for attention. And we're noticing that with Amber. <laughs> Oh. Number 10, you feel like you're walking on eggshells. We talked about this feeling of walking on eggshells with a borderline in my Amber Heard borderline video, but even if the person doesn't have borderline, it can cause extreme tension in the relationship. This constant tension of feeling like no matter what you say will never be right will cause you to become conflict avoidant and will keep issues to yourself, which will naturally build up and result in resentment with your partner. Yes, Amber Heard seems to enjoy getting as much attention as possible, which is possibly why she was so attracted to Johnny Depp's star power. He's an incredible presence. He's an incredibly talented actor and he's wonderful to be around. Also, this could be attributed to her desire to go through with the trial process and even do an NBC interview claiming she's still in love with Johnny Depp. After everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love him. I love him. Amber would surely prefer positive attention to be seen as a victim, but it seems that any attention is better than no attention at all for her. Banana! These are just 10 body language and behavioral red flags to look out for to avoid someone who is a toxic relationship partner. There's several more, but we can't go on forever. You're a fucking baby. Now in the comments, Amber is actually single again right now. So under what circumstances would you ever date Amber Heard? Or who would you think would be a perfect match for her? Let everyone know in the comments below. And on my side of the bed was human fecal matter. I'll give you my response on dating Amber Heard and under what circumstances should someone date Amber Heard on our next podcast. So if you're not already subscribed to the Shake podcast, you may want to do that. We talk about these current event topics in more conversational detail, covering behavior, psychology, body language, and unsolved mysteries. The Shake podcast is everywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon. You can watch the show on YouTube everywhere you get your podcasts. That's where you can find the podcast Shaked. Subscribe because we don't want to miss out on new behavioral body language and investigative videos. See you at the top.